and welcome to day four. Can't believe it's the last day already. It's gone so quick. It's going to be a good one today. Now, did you do your homework? And how about your workbook exercises? If you haven't yet got the workbook, send me your email address and we'll get it to you as soon as we can. Now, when you had the sessions over the last few days, did you think you were going to do? Did you plan to do the homework? Did you plan to do the workbook exercises? And then you maybe didn't do it? Well, that's your paradigm. That's the prime example of a paradigm holding you back. So before we get into it, as we've done every day, think about something. And if you can write it down, something that was good in the last 24 hours. Think of something good and think how you felt when that happened. It's great, right? Attitude of gratitude is what we talked about yesterday. So at the end of today's session, I'll explain a bit about my training and remind you of the special offer we've got for you. Excited about that. Anyway, so we talked about goals and why they're so important. So they give us direction and they make us grow. And ultimately, they get us what we want. So we all need a goal. And we talked about habits and how thoughts create your feelings and conditioning. Um, and we call them paradigms, right? And we talked about how to adjust your behavior by adjusting your thoughts so that ultimately you can start to get some different results. And we've said it many times and we will still keep saying it many times. You become what you think about. What are you mostly thinking about? Is it about what you want or is it about what you don't want? Whatever you think of the most is what's going to materialize in your life. So if you're thinking more about what you don't want than what you do want, it's time to change it, right? It takes a bit of practice. Now, self-image is one of our biggest paradigms. We talked about that as well over the last few days. So how do you see yourself generally? How do you see yourself in relation to your goal? And yesterday we talked about uh, uh, time and money mindset. So how do you see yourself in that respect, do you actually see yourself? Can you even imagine yourself as someone who has time and money freedom? Um, and if you can't, then now is the time to start imagining it. Because we said over the last few days, you know, everything is created twice. First in your imagination and then in real life. So for you to become that person who has the right life work balance, you've got to first start imagining that. right? So there's an exercise for you to carry on with. Now, for you to get or to have anything, you first have to be it. Now, one of the things we tend to say is things like, I'll believe it when I see it, or seeing is believing. But that's not true. It's actually the other way around. Because when you believe it, that's when you're going to see it. That's when it's going to show up for you. So you also have to be in harmony with your goal. Right? You have to align with your goal. You have to be it first. You see, everything in our world operates on a frequency. And the best example I can give, and some of you may have heard this before, is you're listening to a radio station. In the UK, we've got a radio station called Rock FM, and it broadcasts on something like 98.4 FM. And when I tune into that, I can hear what's being broadcast there. Now, you might want to listen to some classical music instead. And the classical channel might be on, I don't know, 100.8 AM. And so you change your dial, it's showing my age, right? We, we still used to change dials, you don't do that anymore. But you basically, you tune into 100.8 AM, and now you're listening to the classical songs, right? But the thing is that they were already broadcasting, right? They didn't just start playing classical music because you tuned in. They've probably been broadcasting there for years on that channel. You just dialed into it. And then because you dialed into it, because you aligned yourself with the frequency, you could hear it. And it's like if you want to speak to me on the phone, right? You dial my number. And because my number gets you on my frequency, then you get to talk to me. But if you dialed a different number, even one digit different, you'd be on somebody else's frequency and you wouldn't be talking to me, would you? Now, we've all had this, uh, and I can give you an example here. So when I was pregnant with my son, Connor, all of a sudden, I saw prams and cots and bottles and nappies and babies everywhere. I'd never even noticed that before. But of course, all those things were already there. It was just because that was an important thing at that moment in my life that I started to see it. You know, maybe you've thought of buying a specific car and all of a sudden you can see those cars everywhere, right? Now, of course, they were already there. You just didn't tune into them. 
So I'll say it again. You become what you think about. And for you to do or have anything, you first have to be it. Now, let's bring back the props. So I have a little card here. And can you see, there you go. Can you see the lines? So where it says you, that's you currently on, the, on your current frequency. But your goal is on a different frequency. Now, for you to achieve your goal, you need to know two things. One of them is where you're at, which is you now. And the other one is where are you going, which is your goal. And then get going in that direction. Okay? So all these lines are frequencies and you're on one frequency and your goal is on a different frequency. So guess what? You've got to get on that frequency. So you are operating on your current frequency and your goals and your dreams and your desires are all on their own frequency. And the way to tap into it, actually, is to start living from the goal, to start living from your wish fulfilled. So already start to think and to feel and to act like the person with that goal achieved. You become it. Because actually, it's already inside of you, right? You would not have come up with that goal if you weren't already it. You just need to start recognizing it. Now, think about, you know, the person, if the person that I'm going to be with that goal achieved, how would... I'd be in a certain situation. You know, what would I be doing if I was already at my goal? So my own example here is, and I give this example to my clients as well, is you know, my, when, when I started out building my coaching business, I would be worried about attracting clients. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'd have a really good call with somebody. They'd be very en enthusiastic, very interested. Some even said that they'd start working with me and then nothing. And I used to get upset about that and I used to start, uh, you know, getting worried and start wondering, well, why does this not happen? Why can't I get the clients? But then I realized what I was doing. I was focusing on what I didn't want. And so what I did instead was I started thinking about what I do want. So me with the me with my goal achieved, the me as a successful and prosperous coach would not worry about that at all. So I stopped questioning, I stopped worrying, and guess what? Clients started to flow to me easily and really quite effortlessly, and I'm having lots of fun. Now, the thing is that it's not actually your goal that is the core issue here, right? It's actually where you are at right now that's the issue. So if you want to shape your future, <clears throat> you have to change your paradigms. So that means that you have to be open-minded, because unless you're open-minded, you're not going to entertain any alternative ideas to where you're at at the moment. So you have to open your mind and allow those new ideas to start flowing in. In fact, I was just talking to somebody uh, just before the masterclass um, and I was explaining to her. And in fact, I'll tell you her story now because she got given notice on her rental uh, apartment in America uh, and she had to move out within a very short space of time. And so I spoke with her last week and she was very worried and very concerned about that and I said well start to write down how you do want it to be so you want to find your ideal house and you want to have an extension on your current lease and then be able to move into your ideal house now guess what she got the extension and the ideal house that she looked at which had been given away to somebody else first they pulled out and she now has the house and she's due to move into that okay so she started to get some ideas as to how she could get that house how she could do the approach. She was open-minded to new ideas. They started coming in because she started to think positively about what she wanted. And hey, presto, she ain't worried anymore. You also have to be illogical. We said um, maybe day one or two, I, I said about, you know, two to four percent of people are living really the life that they want to live. So they're the successful people. So it is illogical for us to be successful. Right? So we have to start doing illogical things, which is like writing down over and over again what you do want, training your mind to go to what you do want. And it's really important when you change your paradigms that you make a committed decision. Now, decision stems from the word, uh, the Latin word, decidere, and I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that right, but it basically means is to cut off all other possibilities. So you've got to make a committed decision and use our will, which is one of our six mental faculties, to focus on one thing, what we want, to the exclusion of everything else. And this all then leads us to one of the key components in achieving success, actually, of getting to your goal, which is actually your attitude. 
right? It's your attitude that's really going to determine your results. We call it the magic word. Now, ask yourself, what is your attitude towards other people, towards particular situations, towards your work? And most importantly, what is your attitude towards yourself? Are you critical all the time? Most of us are. Or do you build yourself up? Do you talk to yourself like you would talk to your best friend? And do you support yourself? Can you rely on yourself? So what's your attitude? Now, do you react to situations and people or do you respond? Do you take a step back and do you choose your thoughts about that rather than jump straight in with the reaction? Now, remember the stick person and the paradigms. So everyone, here's the stick person. There you go. Now, everyone is actually a stick person. You are a stick person and everybody else is. You're a spiritual being in a physical body, not the other way around. And you have a conscious and a subconscious mind and you're acting out your paradigms and everybody else is acting out their paradigms. So start seeing yourself as that stick person and start seeing everybody else as the stick person because when you really get it, you never ever have to argue with anyone ever again. You never have to get upset again. That's their shit, not yours. That's them living out their paradigms. And those people that are sort of misbehaving, they're not thinking. And by the way, mental activity does not constitute thinking. That's just like superfluous thinking. Because when you look at people and you, you realize that they're not thinking, because if they were thinking, they would not be saying the things that they were saying. And if they were really thinking, they would not be doing the things that they are doing. So you can just take a step back and go, okay, well, that person's obviously not aware of what they're doing. They're not aware of even what a paradigm is. And they're doing the things because that's how they're programmed. So that means you can let it go, right? You don't have to en engage with that at all. You don't need to take it personally. And it doesn't need to affect you at all. So what is attitude? Well, attitude is the composite of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. So we talked about... Oh, yeah, that's the right one. So we remind you there of the stick person. So your thoughts are flowing in. So there's power flowing in to your conscious mind. And you can accept the ideas and the thoughts or you can reject them. Now you choose whether you entertain a thought or an idea. And then you choose whether you focus on the negative or the positive goal. Remember, law polarity, everything has an equal opposite. And remember that you are in control of your thinking and it takes practice, but you really are in control of your thinking. Now, the thoughts you accept and internalize, we also say get emotionally involved with, they are impressed upon your subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is actually the universal part of your mind. It's where everything and everyone is connected and everyone and everything is attracted to you and it communicates through vibration. Now, sometimes we talk about connecting heart to heart, which basically means that two or more people operate on the same frequency relative to the same concept. Now, this is why, for instance, a team of people that are in harmony and are working towards the same objective are really powerful and really successful. And if you've worked in business, you've seen this, right? You've probably been part of a very successful team and of a not so successful team. And the successful team is because the people are connecting and they're in harmony and they're working towards the same objective. Now, the feelings in your subconscious mind set up a vibration in your body. And that vibration is what is attracting things to you and basically dictates your actions. Now, negative feelings, negative vibration and emotions, negative results, right? Positive feelings, positive vibration and emotions, positive results. And isn't it funny how when things go well, everything seems to go well. And when things don't go so well, everything seems to go to pot. Now, your subconscious mind is the home of your paradigms. So that's the multitude of habits, your belief system, your conditioning. And your paradigms control the actions of your body. So remember, your body executes what's impressed on the subconscious mind through action. And the body is really an instrument of the mind. And remember, mind is movement. It's an activity said this before, you know, if you believe you can do something, you're right. And if you believe that you can't do something, you are also right. And each belief will cause a very, very different action. So what's your attitude? Everything has good in it and everything has bad in it. Now, do you look for the good or do you focus on the bad? 
Um, an example was with when I was at my hairdresser. I may, I may have given this example before, actually. And it was raining. And she was um, pissed off that it was raining because she didn't. She wanted the sun to shine. She was inside anyway. She drew my hair. And I said, well, I'm really glad it's raining because it saves me a job um, watering my garden tonight. Another example I've got is my son, Connor, who, uh, from being five years old, wanted to be a pilot. And he believed that he could do that. I didn't talk him out of it, although at the time I had no idea how I was going to pay for that. But I thought, well, if that's what you want to do, then, then I'm going to support that. And so because he believed that he could be a pilot, he took certain actions. I took certain actions, but he took his own actions. And he did a specific university course. He did some of the topics at school he chose were because that would get him a better chance to become a pilot. He did a navigation course at university. And he then decided to drop university and go and be part of the cadet scheme with EasyJet. And because he wanted to go and do that, he followed some courses where they teach you, you know, how to do the interviews. He, he actually failed the first time he applied uh, on some science things. So I, I got him a tutor and he worked really hard um, and did all his homework and did everything, did all the studying. And six months later, he did the, all the exams again and he, and he passed. So because he believed he could be um, a pilot, he took certain actions. Now, imagine that there had been a, maybe a boy or a girl next door who also wanted to be a pilot, but didn't believe that they could be a pilot. They would have taken none of the actions that Connor took because they didn't believe it. And there is no difference between that them and, and Connor. So the only difference is the belief that they had. So what I teach people is to first come up with what they really want, take away the constraints we talked about this, come up with what you really want, and then I get you to believe it. Because as soon as you believe it, it's going to happen. And remember, a belief is just a thought that you keep thinking. It's just a story that you keep telling yourself. Right? So become aware of this in your daily life. Become your own observer. Because then you'll learn to respond rather than react. And you'll allow yourself time to choose your thoughts and your feelings and your behavior and your actions, basically your attitude. Because a good attitude is going to get you a long, long way. Be like Clement Stone, who said, that's good. No matter what happened, no matter what bad stuff happened, he would say, that's good. And then he started looking for the good in it. And guess what? When you look for the good, you're absolutely going to find it. Now, one of the most important attitudes is actually the attitude of gratitude, right? So be grateful, choose to be grateful, find things to be grateful for, choose to look for the things to be grateful for, no matter how small they are. Sometimes I'm just grateful for the fact that it's so easy for me to make a cup of tea, or I'm grateful for my washing machine, or for my dishwasher, or for my hot shower, or for my car, or for the friends I have in my life, the fact that I have people who love me. And also for, that I have people that I can love. You know, the small things sometimes, well, most days, I'm just happy I woke up breathing. So find something to be grateful for and your vibration will lift immediately. Now think of something that's not quite how you want it to be. And now look for the good in it. What's the opportunity in that thing that is not quite working out? What's the opportunity? What's the possibility that that is giving you now? The fact that it's not working out what possibility and opportunity is in there. Look for it and you will absolutely find it, I promise you. Now then, how do you use all of this information to attract to you what you want? Well, actually, we do it by tapping into the law of attraction, uh, which is another you know, universal scientific law. Most of us have heard of it. But actually, it's a secondary law. We talk about it like it's a primary law, but it's actually a secondary law. And we activate it through the vibration that we are in. So the primary law is the law of vibration. And that law dictates that everything is always moving and that everything moves at a different speed. So we basically are a molecular structure that's moving at a high speed of vibration. If you look at anything through a microscope, you'll see that everything's always moving. So everything vibrates, nothing rests, everything vibrates, everything is always changing. The problem is that unless we adjust our thought patterns and our feelings and our behavior, we're just changing things to the same thing, right? Now, an example of that would be, you know, that everything has the same essence and everything vibrates. Is, uh, think of a tree or a log for your fire or paper or a wooden table. It's all the same essence, but it just vibrates at a different speed. And remember, your thoughts are a vibration, right? They, they're on a certain frequency, on a certain vibration. 
Now, nothing is created or destroyed. Everything that ever was and everything that ever will be is already here. We just need to tap into it. You need to get onto the frequency of it. So we are putting something out there, our vibration, our frequency, maybe call it broadcasting, and then we attract something back to us, which will be on the same frequency. We can only attract back on the frequency that we're on. So when you feel good, you attract good. So how do you get yourself on the right frequency? Well, it's by using and applying these universal laws. So let's talk about law. So a law is applicable to everyone, every time, for everything. This is why everybody can be successful, including you and including me. Right? Because the law is applicable to everyone, every time, for everything. So there are, there are a lot of scientific and universal natural laws at play all the time. That's what the world's based on, right? And success really isn't luck. It's not a secret. It's a system based on understanding how these laws work. So I'm going to cover just a few of them. And we're very familiar with one of them, which is the law of gravity. And we accept it, understand it, and we, we apply it in our favor to our advantage. And we are in harmony with it. So because we understand it and we work in harmony with it, we are able to build a house. And you know that if you throw a ball up in the air, it's going to come down. You know, if you jump off a building, you're going to go down. It allows us to drive a car, to cycle, to fly a plane, because we understand that law. And we totally trust it. Right? We don't worry that one day gravity is going to disappear, do we? Can you imagine that happening? We'll all be floating. And we know how it works. And so we make it work in our favor. We, we apply ourselves to, to take advantage of that law. Now, there are lots of other laws that we are less familiar with, and there are even some of them we don't even realize exist. So let's explore some of those then. So the law of polarity, which is what we talked about earlier in the week. So everything has an equal opposite. Where there's bad, there's good. Where there's good, there's bad. Where there's a negative, there's a positive. And where there's a positive, there's also a negative. And so we choose to look for the good in everything. And any challenge or a problem is really a learning opportunity, right? So the bigger the challenge, the more you're going to learn, the more you're going to grow. So choosing to focus on the positive will basically upgrade your vibration. You'll feel better and you're going to start attracting better. Better things, I should say. Now, another law is the law of cause and effect, and we've talked about that quite a lot, right? So every action you take causes a reaction. That's your results. Make sure that you take the right actions and the right actions come from the right mindset. We always say 95% of success is down to mindset. Only 5% is down to strategy and action. However, you do have to take the action to get the reaction, right? You can't just sit on your sofa or in the garden and just imagine things. You do at some point have to take some action to be able to get the reaction and get some results. So you need to get your mindset right to then be able to take the most productive action. And a productive action will get you a good result very quickly. And it's very easy and it will feel quite effortless. So when your mindset's right and you take action out of that mindset, then life's easy. Another law is a law of rhythm. And we're not necessarily very familiar with this. Um, so think of ebb and flow, you know, the ocean coming in and going out, the sun and the moon. And then look at yourself and your energy levels. So when in the day do you have the most energy? So some people are really energetic in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evening, some at different parts of the day. Everybody is different, but we all have high levels, levels of energy and low le lower levels of energy at certain parts of the day. So when you know that, you can plan the things that require more energy at those times of the day for you, when you have more energy, right? So if you work with that, then things start to feel more uh, uh, effortless and definitely less stressful. And I always say that this is why it's so important to allow flexibility for the people in your business, because you need to allow them to work to their rhythm so that they will be extremely productive and happy. Now, this law actually also applies when we have up and down days, right? So some days we feel better than others. It's just natural. Just let it be. Just don't get stuck in the complete negativity. But some days you just feel better than others. And some days you just got to say, well, today I ain't feeling so good. I'll be better tomorrow. 
never beat yourself up about it, right? Uh, and then we've got the law of relativity. So everything is relative. When you compare a cat with an elephant, the cat is small. But when you compare a cat with an ant, the cat is big. It's still the same cat. It's just you're just relating it to something else. So, for instance, when you feel overwhelmed or you're too busy or you're not feeling so good, just break things down into little pieces, into little steps, and then take one step at a time. Do the one thing first. If you need to do 10 things, decide which order you're going to do them in and pick them off one by one. And if you don't finish them today, you carry on tomorrow. And, you know, maybe when we think of, of a, a particular sum of money, that you may think that's a lot of money. Break it down. No, um, six thousand pounds might seem a lot, or ten thousand dollars might seem a lot, but a hundred times a hundred is smaller. Sixty times a hundred is smaller. So start working on the first hundred. Now remember, this also gets gets us to comparing ourselves with others, right? And we, from a very early age, we're really taught to compare ourselves with others, to use those five antenna that we've got, those five senses that we've got. Look at the outside world and compare ourselves with it. But the thing is that someone is always better off than you and someone is always worse off than you. So don't compare, don't compete. Instead, make sure that you create. Because when you're competing with the outside world, with, with somebody else or something else, then you're taking the eye off your own ball and you're giving that attention and you're not working on you or on your business. So make sure that you are creating something. And that will get you onto the frequency of what you want to attract. Right? So I think I said this yesterday, you know, your feelings are electric, they send out a message. Uh, sorry, your thoughts are electric and send out a message. And your feelings are magnetic and they, they, your feelings will be what's, what will be attracted to you. So when you think about what you want, when you think about your goal, you need to awaken that feeling of your wish fulfilled. As if you already are in possession of what you want and you're operating from that frequency. What would that person with the goal achieved be thinking? What would they be feeling? What would they be doing? And be that, be that already now. Like the example I gave earlier when I was first starting out and worrying about attracting clients into my business. The person with your wish fulfilled, the person who's achieved the goal, the person who runs a successful business, the person who has great relationships, the person who's really healthy, they wouldn't be concerned about not being that, right? Because they are. And so don't entertain any negative thoughts about what you want. Only entertain what you want. Focus on what you want and how that's going to feel. So here's a really good example of like attracting like and i do give this example to all of my clients and when i do my talks as well so imagine that you have a partner and i'll use he and she but obviously it could be anything so you, you're you're in bed you've been asleep your partner gets up out of bed he goes to work earlier than than you do and um so he does his thing and goes off to work and then you get up and you walk into the bathroom and you notice that the uh, toothpaste is there and the lid is not on the toothpaste and it's a little bit messy. And you think, God's sake, he never puts the tooth, the top on the toothpaste. Oh, I'm really getting pissed off with this now. Why does he not do that? And he never puts his socks in the, in the washing basket. In fact, he takes his clothes and just sort of throws them somewhere and then he expects me to pick them up. And do, never even does the washing himself. Oh my God, when's the last time we had a night out? He never does anything for me. Oh, he really bugs me. And he's, you know, sometimes he just gets late, late to home from work. And, you know, that weekend that we were away, that time we had a big argument. And on holiday 10 years ago, this and this and that happens. You get the gist, right? Now, your partner comes home. And all day you've been thinking about all this negative stuff. Guess how you're going to act? What's the energy that you're going to give to your partner when they walk through the door? Not very good, right? You're not going to be feeling too good and you're not going to be giving out the end of very good energy. In fact, probably you might be ready for divorce at this point. Now, all this happened because you chose a certain thought about the lid not being on the toothpaste, right? Now, imagine the same situation. Partner's gone off to work. You get up, you walk into the bathroom, toothpaste, the lid's not on the toothpaste. And you go, oh my God, he never puts the bloody lid on the toothpaste. Take a breath. 
But actually, it obviously doesn't bother him. It's something that I find important. So I can put the lid on the toothpaste myself. And actually, he's not a bad egg. He's all right. In fact, you know, when he makes an effort, he scrubs up quite well. Oh, yeah. He almost makes me laugh. He makes he does look after me. You know, he takes me out every now and again. And we do have a good laugh and we do get on and we talk about good stuff. You know, he's a great father. Yeah, he gets on with people. He's very sociable. We have great times, actually, when we go out. Yeah, I remember that holiday we went on about 10 years ago. And even then I knew he was the one for me. Now your partner comes home. Guess what energy you're sending out? Now you're happy, right? You're happy to see them. Very, very different. And now you ain't heading for divorce at all. You may be heading for something else, but you're not going to be heading for divorce. Now, the thing is that because you took a step back and you decided to choose your thoughts, you've been feeling good all day instead of feeling bad all day. And when your partner comes home, you're going to have a great time together rather than have an argument about the toothpaste. Make sense? And this is the same for everything. Like attract likes. When you think of a neg something negative and you think about it, I think, you know, people say, if you think about something for more than 16 seconds, the next thought on the same frequency will come to you and the next thought on the same frequency. So when you put yourself for 16 seconds or more on a negative um, frequency, then guess what? Other negative thoughts are going to come to you. But when you choose to think the positive, all the positive thoughts will come to you. And this is the same with your goal, right? So if you start to think about how you can do it, how you can do something, how you can achieve something, thoughts are going to come up answering that question rather than if you ask yourself why you can't do it, because then thoughts are going to come up why you can't do it. Okay, so I love that example. I think it's so true. And all it takes is some training and some awareness, right? So let's get into um, the law of attraction. So what we really need to concern ourselves with is the law of vibration. It's to make sure that we are feeling what we want. In fact, the biggest job we have in our life is to make sure that we feel good. So make sure you're feeling positive feelings about what you want. So how does it feel when you're at your goal? What would you be doing? What does your day look like? Start imagining that. And then imagine it consistently throughout the day. I always say write down three times in the morning and three times in the evening, but it's something you need to do consistently, right? You can't write a positive thing down in the morning and the evening and then be negative all day because that's not going to work. So imagine it. So imagine what it's going to be like. Now we do this a lot in life, right? So for instance, if you are decorating a room, right? You are seeing in your mind, you're seeing that room already decorated, right? And you're gonna, you're taking certain actions. So you're gonna go and get the paint or the wallpaper. Maybe you, get, maybe you do it yourself. Maybe you find someone to do it for you. But you're seeing that room in your imagination. And because of that, you start to take certain actions towards it. And after a while, the room is decorated. So there's one basic truth. We become what we think about, actually what we feel about. So if you're not getting the results that you want, it just means that you're operating on the wrong frequency. That's all. That's it. So to get yourself on the frequency of what you want, you have to adjust your thoughts, which create the feelings and your beliefs, which dictate and control your actions and behavior. And that's what's creating your results. So that's what my training does. It explains exactly how to get onto the frequency of your goal and how to sustain that and how then for sure the results are going to are gonna manifest. They can't not do. If you're on that frequency, they have to happen. It is law, absolute law. Now, remember that your subconscious mind is like soil. Remember, um, I can't remember if it's on the first day or second day now, but I showed you the, uh, the plant pot with the soil in it and, and the, the seeds. So when you nurture the seed, and imagine that the soil is your subconscious mind and the seed is your thoughts. If you nurture the seed, the earth will grow it. It really doesn't care if it's good or bad. So you choose what, what, what seeds are you sowing? What are you, what are you nurturing? What are you giving your attention to, the good or the bad? And so it's really quite simple, but it takes practice. So you also have to be crystal clear on what you want. Right? Because if you are not crystal clear, you don't have a clear goal, then one, you don't have direction. So you're just fumbling around and you don't know what, what you're doing. And you're very reactive. 
if you don't have a goal. And also, like I said before, it makes us grow. And to, for us to feel good, we have to be growing because we're goal-seeking organism, part of nature, which is always growing. But you've also got to be quite specific, right? Because you, you're sort of, in a way, you're placing an order to the universe for the universe to deliver it back to you. Now, the thing is that if you're ordering a book from Amazon, you wouldn't just order a book. You would order a very specific book. You would know what the title of the book was, what the author was, maybe even the uh, which um, edition it is. So you'd be very specific because otherwise Amazon doesn't know what to deliver to you. It could be anything. So you have to identify and be very specific about what you want. How much do you want to weigh? How many hours do you want to work? What work do you really want to do? How much money do you really want? What kind of a relationship do you really want? Et cetera, et cetera. Now, people say, well, I want more money. But that's very vague because if you find a penny on the floor, you've got more money, right? But that is not what you mean. Or you want you say, I wish I could work less hours. Well, if you work for less, 10 minutes less in your day, you're working less hours, right? But that's so we need to be very specific because when you're very specific, you exactly know the actions that you need to take to get there and the universe will give you the response. The law of attraction will deliver that to you. Think of it as um, if, you, if you're a parent and you want to support and help your children. But if they don't, if they're not clear in telling you what it is that they want, you don't know what to give them. right? Or even you're know, with your friends. If your friends are not clear about what they want you you can't be really clear on what they give what to give them so we need to be very very specific and my thinking into results training we, we really really get into that and how to how to do that so i love this and if you when you really understand this you really will attract everything that you need and everything that you want into your life right this is good and like i said success is a system and if you follow it you will attract whatever it is that you want now, close your eyes and imagine how you would feel when you've achieved that goal. How does that feel? Now, weirdly, some of you might come up with some negative thoughts like, no one will love me or I will be alone. I will lose my friends. People won't understand me anymore. I'll be on my own. That's weird, right? Now, explore those beliefs. Because those negative beliefs, they really are not true. But remember, we have a positive and a negative to everything. So when you positively think about your goal, you started to feel your goal, doubts and worry will creep in. But then you choose to think about the positive. But it's a message to you, right? So you can explore those negative beliefs and change them because they really are not true. They're just how you've been conditioned. And it's your paradigm that's rearing its head and it's trying to hold you back. Now, don't let your paradigms or anybody steal your dreams. Your dreams, you go get them. So message me if you want to have a session uh, uh, on that, because if you feel negatively about your goal, you're not going to manifest it. right? No matter what you do, if your core feeling about your goal is negative, you ain't going to manifest it. So more than happy to sort of have a talk to you about that and see if we can't move that along for you. Now, just think you've had... A couple of hours over the last four days of working with this material and if you if you've applied even a little bit of it then things will already have started to change now imagine where you could be in six months time if you did this for the next six months so let me tell you a little bit about the training so my training is a six-month program there are 12 modules and each module takes two weeks and it includes a daily video a participant's guide, there's a weekly group facilitation with me and then an alternative weekly in a circle call also with me. I do everything on Zoom and you get worksheets every day. So you, you need to watch the video, do the worksheet, read a text every day. So you've got to get yourself into the habit of, um, of studying every day. That's what we're doing. So we would start with setting a C-type goal. We'll get into that, understand what it is that you really want. If you don't know, we'll find out what it is. And then once you've set that goal, we start to explore the knowing doing gap. So remember, that's understanding why you're doing things you shouldn't be doing and why you're not doing the things that you should be doing. So we'll explore what's holding you back uh, and create some productive habits and actions rather than non-productive habits and actions. 
we really get into the stick person, really get into how the mind works and then how to control it using our six mental faculties. Now, self-image is a lesson on its own. It's a very big lesson, as well as the terror barrier, uh, which basically explains why people give up when it gets uncomfortable on the way to the goal and then how to smash through it. So anyone, anyone who has achieved anything of any consequence, including you, you will have crashed through that terror barrier before. So we're going to explain how that works and how you can crash through it for your goal. So we have a, a module on attitude, the magic word, and on leadership as well, how to lead others, but first how to lead yourself. And then we cover the key elements of success and then how to tap into other people to help you achieve your goals and for you to help them achieve their goals. So are you ready to invest in you? Think back to those images and those feelings of you being at your goal, of you and your loved ones thriving, because that's what you're going to be doing, because you made the decision to say, yes, I'm going to do this. You said yes to you. Why not say yes to you? What have you got to lose? So there's a lot of information in your workbook. Um, now reach out to set up your free discovery session. Uh, and remember, I'm offering a, a second free session to really get you on your way and really get you into it. Okay? And I'm excited for that. It's always really, really good because very quickly things already start to change. Uh, you can also, if you want to send us your application form, which is in the workbook, uh, and then we'll connect with you in the next day or so to set up some time in the diary. Now, life is short. Live it well. Make it awesome, because why the hell not? Because if you don't do something now, when are you going to do it? When are you going to make that change? Next week? Next month? After Christmas? Before Christmas? Next year? In two years? In five years? How long have you been saying that? And I promise you, if you follow what we tell you to do, you for sure, for sure will see a massive, massive improvement in your life within a very, very short space of time. And remember that that's, it's a lot of the time it's our past experiences that are holding us back. That's basically our, our conditioning, right? But your past has sweet FA to do with your future because this moment right now is only the way that it is because of how you've thought in the past, the decisions that you've made in the past, the actions that you've taken in the past. That's where you, where you are, where you're at now. So what we're going to do is going to look at, okay, well, what do you want to be different? And then you're going to start doing different things, right? And as I said before, it's very difficult actually to, to get rid of that paradigm because your conditioning is very, very strong without someone holding you accountable and sort of dragging you out your comfort zone and getting you to think outside of the box and then sticking with those new ideas that are going to come up. It is so exciting. I absolutely love it. So you decide what's your life going to be like from now on. Are you going to have more of the same or are you going to really make a change? I know what I did and I'm so glad that I did it. So any questions, let me know. We're here to help you set up that time in the diary with me. Um, and I want to thank you for being here. I have absolutely loved doing this. Um, I really hope that, that, you know, you've already started to make some changes and you've seen some different things. And it's this four days in, right? And I really look forward to seeing you soon. So in the meantime, have fun. Think about what you want and make it happen. See you soon. Bye.